What's up guys, Sal here. So a couple of weeks ago, we heard a rumor that Samsung is moving away from designing custom cores for their Exynos processors. And it looks like it was true. Samsung has fired the entire team behind the project at its R&D center in Austin, a team of 290 engineers and experts. So this means the Exynos 990, which is their latest flagship processor that will end up on the Galaxy S11, will be the final Exynos chip with custom M cores. Now Samsung will directly license ARM's design going forward. So what does this mean to Samsung and their Exynos lineup? Let me explain this in a very simple term so that everyone can understand. You see, Samsung, Apple, Qualcomm, Huawei, and MediaTek, these companies make their own smartphone processor or chipsets, and they all use ARM's architecture. ARM doesn't make chips, they just design the templates for the chips. Samsung, Qualcomm, Apple, Huawei all use these templates by ARM and they either modify this template a little or use it as it is to make their own chipsets. Huawei uses the template as it is to make their current chipsets while Samsung, Apple and Qualcomm modify the template a little to make their own Exynos, Snapdragon or A-series Bionic chips. Now, Samsung firing their custom core team would mean that Samsung no longer wants to modify the template and they just want to use it as it is like Huawei does. Samsung might be thinking, since the performance difference between customizing the template and the stock template is very minimal, so why even spend billions of dollars in customizing the template? So that's one of the reasons they are moving away from designing custom cores for their Exynos processors. There's one more possibility though. You've seen recently that Exynos processors are lacking behind the Snapdragon in performance and in graphics. So Samsung might have thought, well, since we're getting our arses kicked by Qualcomm and Apple recently, so what we'll do is let go of these engineers who are responsible for our beatdown. Going forward, we'll take Qualcomm's approach, use the stock template by ARM, and modify it just a little and make great processors so that there isn't a performance disparity between the Exynos and Snapdragon variants. In any case, the way Exynos processors are made is changing in 2021. Samsung is also using AMD's Radeon graphics starting 2021 that will make sure the GPU game of the Exynos is on par or even better than Qualcomm's and Apple's GPU. As far as the recently unveiled Exynos 990, it is indeed going inside the Galaxy S11. Some people think Samsung will unveil another flagship chipset, the Exynos 9830 for the S11, which for sure will not happen. Samsung's marketing team has rebranded the Exynos lineup just recently, which their engineering team had no idea while designing the Exynos 9830. And that's why we still see Exynos 9830 mentioned in the codes of the One UI 2. So make no mistake, Exynos 990 is the Exynos 9830. The Galaxy S10 Lite is going to be the fifth Galaxy S10 model which is coming this year. It has flagship specs and in many ways it's better than the Galaxy S10 Plus itself. Samsung will sell this phone as a budget alternative to their expensive Galaxy S10 models. A couple of days ago we have talked about its specs and today a certification confirms the battery capacity and it's indeed 4500 mAh. The listing shows 4370 mAh which is the rated capacity, the typical capacity is going to be 4500. For instance, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus has 4170 milliampers rated capacity but the typical capacity is 4300 milliampers. Anyway, to keep updated with all the Galaxy S10 Lite or any other smartphone tech information, do consider subscribing and as always, I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace out.